Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another Hobby Stuff video where I cover hobby resources, supplies, or tools. And this is another hobby resource. This is um, how to paint Citadel tanks from Games Workshop. And this is um, the last of their four books currently that they offer for how to. I covered the other three. This is how to paint Citadel tanks. Now, um, in the How to Paint Citadel Managers book, um, it really only is for infantry and monsters, creatures, and things like that. That's uh, the book. If you're Tyranids, you only need that book, really. You don't have to worry about this book, per se. Um, if you play Fantasy or other systems, that's the book for you. This book focuses on tanks because in the How to Paint Citadel Managers book, they briefly cover tanks a little bit, but really, they don't go into it. It's really more for infantry. <clears throat> and you may be saying, what's the big deal about tanks? Well, tanks are a different beast. It's much more angular and boxy. Certain tanks are much more organic flowing uh, in, in a bigger sense for other tanks. And uh, it, it's a different challenge to paint them up. They're bigger and certain uh, techniques don't necessarily work so well on certain tanks. On, uh, certain tanks. So, what we have here is a little how-to to do that. And uh, it's 30 bucks like the other books. And this one, I think, if you're playing 40k and you're playing anything that's not Tyranids, and you're definitely going to be utilizing some vehicles, it can be worth it. Because I'll tell you uh, personally, um, I have an idea of how I want to put out my Dark Angel infantry, but my vehicles I'm still kind of scratching my head on. So, um, this I've had this book for a while actually, and um, I'm going to reread it for when I eventually pin up uh, new Dark Angel tanks. Anyway. What we get is more of the similar stuff. We get um, a little introduction here, some contents. We go right into tools. Brushes, glues, that type of thing. We get random tips everywhere, safety tips. Um, heavy metal examples of stuff that they're going to go over. And the beginning is assembly techniques with preparation. Um, for clipping out the parts and cleaning out the parts. Dry fitting the parts, which are very important, always dry fit. The idea of sub-assemblies. A lot of tanks have sub-assemblies that you don't have to assemble on the tank. You can assemble it off the tank and put it on later. Moving parts. A lot of tanks have moving parts that you can keep moving if you want to. Uh, mold lines and seams they go over how to get rid of. They go over utilizing rubber bands to hold uh, the tank in place while it dries. They go over uh, filling in certain sinkholes, sometimes you get that, and they go over sanding. And they go over assembling plastic and metal pieces together for tanks, like this uh, tank right here. The, um, the organ of doom, as some people call it. <laughs> anyway, they also go over doing additional details like drilling out the gun barrels, um, subbing out the Chaos Marines weapon barrels for uh, these dragon heads. You know, cutting it and putting these on. Fitting tow cables, smoke grenades, making it look like it was used. Then we have um, adding weld lines to the tank to give it more of a, maybe a repaired or more industrial type of look. Adding rivets to a tank, make it look beefier. Adding turret hooks, aerial recognition symbols, armor plating, like a, a hasty repair job. You can do that with the armor plating and then adding weld lines to it, making hatches that actually work, which is pretty cool of an idea, and then the idea of tank crews, and how to make it so you can make them um, removable so you can close the hatch. And then they show you kind of like all these ideas come together on this one bane blade, a bunch of different fine details added to the tank that really aren't necessary, but it does kind of bring the tank to life a bit more. And then an example of uh, of tanks with stuff added to them. And then again, the painting techniques. We get the idea of undercoating, the black undercoat versus the white undercoat. We get the idea of utilizing a spray gun. In this case, it's Citadel spray gun because they're, of course, going to show their own product. Citadel foundation paints, kind of uh, what to use as a base, mid tone, and highlight color for certain colors which is cool, and the idea of utilizing foundation paints and building up a base coat with regular Citadel paints, you know, the non-foundation. Building up a base coat over a black undercoat versus a white undercoat. 
the idea of dry brushing, they go for when to dry brush and when to not dry brush. Well, when to not dry brush, dry brushing um, with foundation paints. <coughs> Tips for dry brushing, different colors. And they go over um, dry brushing examples on these tanks here. Not every tank is going to need dry brushing, by the way. A lot of tanks do benefit from it. They also go over layering and blending. <coughs> with this tank as an example. They go over extreme highlighting, which a lot of tanks can also benefit from. They go over utilizing washes. Again, a technique that will be helpful on tanks and on infantry, but again, we're talking about tanks here. And then they go over um, this cool looking towel uh, vehicle, what they call tide marks, which is pretty cool. Interior detailing, which tanks do have interior detail. And if you want the interior to be visible, you know, i.e. moving parts to open up doors, you're probably going to want to paint them up inside or paint up the interior detail. And then we have camouflage patterns and two techniques of doing it. Controlled bursts to give you kind of a faded technique from one color to the next. Or masking to give you kind of a sharp, rigid camo line. Examples of Imperial Guard camouflage and their um, application. We have an example of towel camouflage because towel do the camouflage a bit differently. And the technique of underdrawing, using a pencil to draw out the camel pattern on the tank and then painting it up. Towel camouflage looks cool, but it also looks like it takes a lot of time. Never tried it myself. We have different examples of that here. Then we have the idea of using transfers. Now, not everybody likes using transfers on infantry. They think it's too hard or they just don't like it. I went over that Microsoft micro set, very critical things to have. And they'll also work great on tanks. And tanks are big flat objects for the most part. Even with the uh, Tau and the Eldar, they're pretty big, relatively smooth for certain areas to apply transfers or freehand work. And uh, the transfers can really make a tank come to life. And they go over utilizing transfers, even cutting transfers so they fit so it looks like it's actually behind this tow cable. And Microsol, micro set will really help you, or micro set then Microsol. Uh, will really help you apply transfers even on tanks. They go over masking to get this kind of uh, marking here. This is some really cool masking. I would never be able to cut out a symbol like the Dark Needle symbol to mask, but what they did was skull white the tank, put this masking down properly. Then they probably use a spray gun for the Dark Needle's green, or basically building up the green. And then once they were done with that, they peeled off the masking and got a cool white symbol. I don't think I'd ever do that, but it's a cool idea. And if you have a little bit easier symbol to do, you could uh, apply this. And they show you examples of more masking on these tanks here. Then we have the example of Eldar markings. Because Eldar drew their markings differently. We have the example of Orc markings. Because they do stuff a little differently depending on the clan. Then we have freehand work, lettering, and decoration, which I show you here and go over how to apply freehand lettering and the idea of freehanding on your tanks with some two with two very cool examples. Um, Marnie S. Caligar's Personal Land Raider, which has always been one of my favorites when I first saw it. And then this crazy, wacky uh, Land Raider Crusader custom job with this weird turret on top and cool freehanding for the Dark Angels. Then we have vehicle crew, the idea of vehicle crew, and what they go over here is, you know, sh should they mash the tank, should they have certain colors, stuff like that. It, it kind of gives you help there. Um, and they go over to how to paint Citadel Manager's book here, saying, you know, this is a good idea you know, uh, to have probably as well for the crew and whatnot. Then we have uh, the idea of crew conversions, to give the crew a bit more life, which is kind of cool. battle damage on our tanks. Now people love weathering up their tanks, making them look damaged, and this is a section for that. We have some light damage on this tank up here, you know, with uh, some chipping and bullet marks. And we got some heavy damage on this tank down here. As you can see, it's pretty much destroyed. This can make a cool either terrain piece or um, objective marker. And they go over some basic uh, battle damage, like scratches, bullet holes, bolter damage, and uh, shrapnel. Then they go over some more exotic stuff, like damaged wraith bone, melta damage, 
claw damage, bioacid damage, and the idea of hasty repair work, which is pretty cool as well. I'm going to show you examples of this damage on tanks. Um, they go over weathering because people love to weather their tanks. Vehicles are not going to be pristine on the battlefield, so weathering adds a sense of realism there. They go over how to do it a little bit here and there. And what I like here is you see it says using pastels. Pastels are basically a good way of making your own weathering powder depending on how well you do it. And they go over that because I don't think Forge World had their weathering powder at the time. So they're basically saying you can make your own. And that's pretty cool. And you got the idea of sand, concrete dust, clay, and the idea of road dust here on this orc bike. And things like bikes, jet bikes, can also make use of this book as well. Then we see scratches, paint damage. You know, it's not necessarily going to be actual full-on battle damage. You could just be damage to the paint uh, on the tank. And then we have, um, zoom in a little bit, examples of weathering on these tanks here. We got uh, scorched metal, and we also have a rare degree, stuff like a patina. And then we have rust effects, uh, runoff effects, um, a little bit more type of different rust effect, wet mud, how you can add mud to a model like a sentinel here, and how to make some mud. They go over here, you can uh, make a mud with a mix of sand, PVA, glue, and scorched brown and ruined brown paint together that make kind of like this paint on mud, which is a pretty cool effect to have. And they show you putting it all together, all the different weathering techniques and whatnot on one tank. Golden Demon examples. And they go into stage by stage. And the stage by stage in this book is pretty cool. It goes over, um, in this case, the Space Marine Predator with a focus on flat colors and metallics. Then you have um, Lehman Rust Imperial Guard Tank with a focus on camouflage and weathering, which is pretty cool. Then we have an orc truck with a focus on patterns, chipping, and rust. Then we have Chaos Space Marine Defiler with a focus on very degree and freehand detail on this um, Nurgle Defiler. And we have an Elder Falcon with a focus on blending paint together. And that's pretty cool. At the end here we have tank color guides. So if you want to make a Space Wolf Grey tank, your base color, mid-tone, and highlight color, kind of like the uh, How to Paint Stale Manchures uh, guide as well. And then a picture of a Stompa. So, obviously if you're going with tanks, this is a very good book to have. And I like how the stage by stage has a focus. Yes, it's showing you how to paint up that Ultramarine Predator, but it's got a focus on flat color work and it had a focus on metallics. You can take those focus points and apply them to that Lehman Russ, for example. You can take the weathering on that Lehman Russ, apply it to the Predator. You can take the camouflage on that Lehman Russ, apply it to the Defiler even. Or you can take those techniques and apply it to a Tau um, uh, vehicle. So, it shows you stage by stage, yes, but also it kind of gives you a bit of a focus on certain techniques which you can apply to other tanks, and I like that. So. Definitely, I think, worth picking up, especially if you're going to be paying up tanks for 40k. If you're not going to be painting up tanks or be playing 40k, then you don't really have to worry about it. Although, the weathering techniques and stuff like that could be handy even on non-tank models. Like, uh, Dreadnoughts can make use of this. Bikes and um, uh, jet bikes and stuff can also make use of this stuff as well. I would say the skill level, this is something if you're a beginner painter and modeler, you can still make use of. I think it goes... Um, slightly above beginner all the way to basically a veteran. The more comfortable you are with the techniques, the more you can experiment and try. So don't feel intimidated by some of the stuff in here. It definitely can be used for beginner painters and um, novice painters all the way up through uh, people who are fairly advanced in painting. So that's pretty cool, I think. Anyways, that's it. So until next time, take it easy.